everyone. I am so happy to be talking to you today. My name is Terry Larkin and I've written a book along with my sister Marjorie Steiner called The Light Gap, God's Amazing Presence. And this book was written about a near-death experience that I had years ago in, back in 1982. <laughs> back when not very many people were talking about near-death experiences. And my life was such a journey following that to understand what it all meant and put the pieces of understanding in place in my life where it was making a difference in how I lived my life. My sister Marjorie lost her daughter in 1996, Anne, who was 19 at the time in a tragic accident. And she had a light experience that followed Anne's death that put her in a place of absolute love and feeling absorbed into an undescribable light. And that matched exactly with the type of experience that I had in my near-death experience. So it sent us searching together for answers about life after death. I had much to tell, much to talk about, but I was keeping it in an internal way for a really long time. And now I'm so glad that I've had the opportunity to write it into our book because it's made a big difference in my life. And we've begun sharing with workshops and we've been speaking and we're very pleased to have this new format because we've been blogging now for th two or three years on our website at www.thelightgap.com and we would love to have you join us there in our website where we you will find lots of information about us and about our journeys and exciting details but today I I know some of you and I'm so happy to be talking to you again. And for others, I'm just happy to meet you today. And I hope that we can become parts of each other's lives in special ways. Today, in this blog, I am sharing a little bit about what me meditation has really meant in my life following my near-death experience. I had lots of experiences that I needed to, to process. And I'm have found over the the 30 years now 25 to 30 that I have been meditating that life was coming through so graphically again once I understood what the whole meditation uh, art of meditation was all about for you see we are a masterpiece our body is a masterpiece already God gave us an amazing gift that exists right inside of us. And I found out during my near-death experience that we are definitely two parts of the same whole. Our soul is eternal. And our memories of ourselves all were in my mind, but I was outside of my body in a state of in absorbed in incredible love and the words that I couldn't stop saying is love is all there is but we uh, very often and I still do many times equate that word love with the type of love of human love that we experience here on earth with other people and with our families and with our friends but the divine love that comes from our eternal soul exists right inside of us. For a long time when I first began to meditate, I thought there had to be just one right way to meditate. And so I, while I did a lot of research on what I should be doing, I was taking other people's ideas and trying them out. And now, after a longer period of time, I've begun to realize that we have that masterpiece right inside our mind, an art masterpiece that we can create for ourselves. The main purpose that I have come to realize is that to go into meditation is to connect with our soul and with the spirit world 
that exists not very far away from us at all. It took a lot of learning and searching in the whole field of spirituality, science, and the afterlife of putting all the threads together of what we would call our life. Our life which in our mind, in our body, in our spirit are totally connected. I think you can create an art masterpiece for meditation for yourself. And that's the message that I'm sharing in today's blog. There are components that are very important in meditation and I'm going to talk about a few that, that really are helpful to have in place and yet there isn't a right and a wrong. There is what you have created, can create, or will create that makes the best connection for you to your soul, to God, angels, guides, any words that you want to use to connect to that spirit world that I so powerfully experienced during my near-death experience. Environment of where you are meditating does make a difference. You know, the word feng shui, I'm sure you've heard, is really a concept that we need to pay attention to. We find that our feelings of where we are can make a huge difference in how your meditation goes. We feel the feelings of other people because feelings are pure energy, just like everything else around you. Everything is energy. And our bodies are in an energy field that we are using during meditation to get that just right frequency because really, truly, you become that antenna for bringing the spirit world to you so that you can have that two-way conversation that can become very critical in your life. Part of my story is that after my near-death experience of hearing that God is pure love, unconditional, non-judgmental, was the fact that we have the ability to bring self-healing inside our bodies. It took me a long time to research and understand what that really meant. And in 2006, I became a very ill person. And I was very sick for two years. I had learned how to heal, but it what happened in my meditation one day where I had fallen apart, hit bottom. And I heard very loudly, very clearly during that meditation, Terry, you know how to heal. Put it in place in your own life. Well, if you can imagine, I was pretty startled at that message. And yet, it opened some pathways that I know I had been closing for a while. And finding those pathways to be able to hear the messages that were coming changed my life. Because after that, I was beginning to hear, this is what you need to do next, do it. And believe me, I was following the advice that I was getting in from that spirit world. But it also helped me to put in place and understand in my life that we have that guidance with us all the time. It is right with us during meditation and in every waking moment of your day. Um, when you are thinking through how you're going to meditate, the environment is very, very important. If I had my choice, I would keep nature around me. We connect very, very clearly into nature simply because our bodies are made of the same elements as Earth is. And if we stop the, that communication, we are stopping some of that pathway. So I bring in plants and I bring things that are really very special to me to make me feel the love that I want to feel while I'm there. And that's important for you to do too. You want to be comfortable, you want to be warm, cozy is a word that comes to mind. And whether you're sitting, whether you're lying, 
does not matter. You are able to connect because you want to keep your spinal cord straight while you are sitting, while you are meditating, because that's how the energy is flowing in throughout you from below and from above. Your heart is the bridge between your self, your earthly human body, and your soul. That's the bridge. But feelings are the language of your soul. They are how you are getting messages. That's how we find out that the oneness that I experienced in my near-death experience, that we are all connected because we connect through compassion, love, patience, humility, gratitude. All those things that we think we need to reach for are actually right inside of us right here already built a gift from God they are inside of us and that's what we're doing when we're meditating we're lighting that candle to remind us that we have that spark of life right inside of us if we're able to quiet our mind somewhat but you know we can't quiet it completely and that is something I want to share a tip with you and that is that we we try to keep our mind quiet, but I need, for instance, music in mind to get my mind to be able to create that masterpiece that becomes your meditation or mine, and they are very, very different. Think of an artist like Picasso being totally different from, from other artists who illustrate very differently. We are all, all very connected in that ability to create that art for ourselves. So, one of the ways that if negative thoughts do come to you during meditation, which they can, I use a short yoga routine in the beginning before I expect my mind to be quiet. It is a piece of my meditation. I am moving energy in my body. It is very helpful for me to understand the chakras. And that is also in our book, In the Light Gap. And we have a lot to share about how to use those. But the energy is flowing in that spinal cord. And you are finding those traits. They are coming out. You have them built in. When you have the environment that suits that, the music that fits your soul, is what's important for yourself or the silence. Preparing your mind. Inspirational literature can help with that. And we'll talk about that in a, in a future blog. I'm going to be talking about some of the inspiration for some of the thoughts of preparing your mind as you are in meditation. And But it's important to remember that there's connections between healing. I refer back to uh, Yogananda periodically because he, back in the early 1900s, understood the healing connection with us being able to connect through our spinal cord, through the energy, through the universal truths that flow through every single one of us. Isn't our body just amazing to think that we can accomplish some of these things? I have so much more I want to share with you, but I will share one, one more technique today, and that is that in my life experiences, I was able to set some of mine aside by just creating a box, a heart shaped box, because all those love thoughts need to come in. And inside my box are some very difficult challenges in my life. We all have them. And the, they were thoughts that were filtering through my mind when I didn't want them all the time. So I wrote about them, put them in my box, a few pictures, so that I can close it up, set it aside to take care of myself during this meditative time. Self-love is so extremely important to you and I. Because that's another thing I learned during my near-death experience. You are a gift of God, and that self-love is God's love coming in through you and then back out through you. 
And that's what meditation can provide. I've got so many more things to share, but keep to keep tuned because I'm looking forward to seeing you again another day and I have so much more to share. See you then.